Hey guys, this is Hemant from Edureka. Welcome to this session on UiPath Tutorial. Today in this session, we are going to get an overview of the UiPath tools. So without wasting any time, let's move on to the agenda to see what all we'll be covering in today's session. So we'll start today's session by first discussing what is RPA and what are the different tools which are used to implement this technology. After that, I'm going to teach you guys how you can install the UiPath Studio on your computer and then discuss different project types that are offered by UiPath and how to choose between them. After that, we are going to cover all the UiPath components which are available in the tool and towards the end, we'll be doing a hands-on wherein we'll be using all the knowledge that we'll be gaining towards the session. All right, so guys, this is our agenda for today. I hope it's clear to you. Let's start on with our first topic of today's session, which is what is RPA? So what is RPA? So RPA, as you know, it's an acronym for Robotic Process Automation. Now, what do these three terms mean? Let's understand them one by one. Now, robotic means any entity which tries to mimic human actions, right? So any entity which can mimic human actions and do complex tasks is known as robotic. Then comes process. So any sequence of steps that can lead to a meaningful activity is known as a process. So it could be a process of switching on lights. It could be a process of making your favorite dish. It could be the process of making tea, right? So if you take the example of tea, basically you just put water, then you put tea leaves, and then you put milk. So all these three steps lead to the making of tea. So hence it becomes a process, all right? So this is what a process is. And then is automation. So automation basically means doing a task without human intervention. So if an entity does a task without human intervention, that entity is said to be automated, all right? So let's conclude what we just said. So robotic means mimicking human behavior to do a particular task that is processed without human intervention, all right? So that is termed as RPA. Moving on guys, uh, now we now know what RPA basically means. Now let's see how we can implement the RPA technology on your computer. So you can implement the RPA technology using the leading tools which are available in the market. So there are a lot of tools guys which are available in the RPA sphere but the leading three tools which are available right now are UiPath, Blue Prism and Automation Anywhere. All right, so we'll be taking a session forward with the UiPath tools so, but let's see why are we not using Blue Prism or why are we not using Automation Anywhere. All right. So if you talk about Blue Prism guys, so Blue Prism does not have any trial version. If you want to try Blue Prism or if you want to use Blue Prism, the only way you can do that is by buying it, all right? Or by requesting the company. In rare cases, they might offer you a trial version if they think you are going to buy it, right? And then comes the tool called Automation Anywhere, wherein you do get a trial version, but that trial version is only limited to 50 tasks, all right? So if you want to practice RPA, if you want to learn RPA, these are not the two tools that you want to be learning on because they don't offer a viable trial version, right? But if you talk about UiPath guys, so these guys have been very generous in by offering a community edition wherein you can practice the RPA technology and implement it, right? And if you feel you want to implement it at a business level, you can go ahead and buy their licenses as well, all right? So that is the reason guys will be using the UiPath tools today so that you guys can also practice at your end as well. All right. So uh, for you to practice guys, the first thing that you have to do is install UiPath Studio on your system. So for doing that, you first have to go to this particular link that is uipath.com slash community. So once you go to this particular link, let me quickly show you. This is the website that you'll be getting. All right. So scroll down and click on get community edition. So once you click on get community edition, you'll be prompted with the screen wherein you have to enter all your details and your email ID. All right. So once you fill in all your details, click on request community edition and you will reach this page, which basically acknowledges that you have uh, requested the UiPath Studio and your download will begin in some moments, right? So if it doesn't begin, just click here on this particular part and it will start your download manually, all right? So once your file has been manually, just double click on it to execute it. And once it gets executed, this is the screen that you'll be seeing. Now guys, there are no set of wizards in installing UiPath. So it will get installed in like one or two minutes. And once it does, you'll be prompted with this screen wherein you have to enter the same details as you entered on your registered page. So if you talk about this page, all you have to enter is your email address 
the device ID will be entered automatically so you don't have to touch that and simply click on activate all right so once your tool is installed it will show you the screen which acknowledges that your UiPath Studio has been successfully installed on your system and then you can go ahead and use the UiPath Studio all right so let's go ahead and get started with the UiPath Studio now so once you have your tool installed uh, when you will open your UiPath Studio this is how it will look like all right you will be prompted with this screen wherein you have to choose a project of your choice now how will you choose the project is something which we'll discuss now but before that there are two key concepts that you should understand whenever you are working with UiPath all right what are these uh, two key concepts so first you should understand what is an activity and then you should understand what is a sequence so what is an activity any small task that you do on in the UiPath studio or during automation is known as an activity all right so it could be for example clicking the left button of a mouse or pressing a key on your keyboard right so small tasks like these are termed as activities all right so the other examples for this could be clicking the close button or uh, copying the text from somewhere or pasting the text from the clipboard all right so all of this are called activities now when you combine activities they lead to a meaningful task for example if you want to shut down the computer you first have to click on start and then you click on the shutdown button and your computer will then execute the shutdown command all right so when you combine these activities that lead to a meaningful task these activities are then termed as a sequence so to achieve the event you combine these activities and this combination is known as a sequence all right so these are the two key concepts that you have to remember whenever you are using UiPath because these terms will be used a lot when you're working with UiPath all right all right so we are clear with what are activities we are clear with what is sequence now let's go ahead and discuss the type of projects that you have in UiPath Studio so like I said guys these are the four type of projects which are available to you you have a blank project you have the simple process then um, you have agent process improvement and then you have transactional business process so let's discuss each one of these all right so let's talk about the blank project first so guys this is the screen for your blank project this is how your blank project actually looks like and as the name suggests it is a clean slate it has nothing in it there are no templates there are nothing predefined in your workspace you have to define everything from scratch all right so whenever you need anything from scratch you can use the blank project or you're working with a new project you can use the blank project for that particular use case then comes the project called simple process which is basically a template for a flowchart all right so why would you need a flowchart or why would you need this template is because of something like this so whenever there's a use case wherein a particular input can lead to two different kind of sequences or two different kind of activities or two different kind of tasks you use a flowchart for example as you can see you have true and false over here right so if it's true you do this particular thing if it's false you do this particular thing right for example when you log in if you are the administrator say uh, you can send an email to any person right if you're not the administrator you can only access your desktop all right so these are two different things which are available on a single input that is logging in and for that you use a flowchart all right for these particular tasks you use a flowchart moving on guys the third kind of project is called agent process improvement which is basically to assist any user who is working on a system for example if you are working on a system and if you want to copy a particular task one way to do that would be to right click it and click on copy right the other way to do it would be to select that particular icon and press ctrl C that automatically copies your file into the clipboard right so that is a shortcut so if you want to define your own shortcut which employs automation technologies you can use the agent process improvement now as you can see in the screenshot guys you can actually configure a trigger or a key press trigger that you want to configure on which it will do a particular set of tasks for example if you want to define your own trigger it could be say control T and every time you press control T together you want your system to go to Google and to check the time for Chicago copy it inside clipboard and keep it there so whenever you're pressing control T now and whenever you go to some other place and paste it you will basically get the Chicago time on its own you don't have to Google it 
and find out the time or that is happening automatically at the background side right so this is what agent process improvement is now obviously you can configure to have much more complex tasks but whenever your project is something like this that you want to assist the user who is working on the system you will use agent process improvement all right the fourth kind of project is called transactional business process now what is a transactional business process so basically projects which include states whenever you want to have states in your program you use this particular project now what are states guys so let me give you an example whenever you start your computer you see the starting window screen right so that starting window screen stays there until and unless every process that is required for your operating system to run is loaded into the memory right so once all the programs are loaded into the memory it moves from the starting state to the execution state wherein you work on your computer right and once you're done with your work you click on shutdown and then it moves from this execution state to the shutdown state wherein it first kills all the processes and till it kills all the processes you see that shutdown icon wherein it says shutting down right so that is a state so you discuss three states there first is the starting window state the execution state and then the shutting down state. So whenever in your program you don't want to move to the next state until and unless all the tasks have been completed in the previous state, you use the transactional business process. Now it is very important kind of project whenever you're dealing with complex tasks, right? So whenever you're dealing with complex tasks in which each and every step is important and you cannot go to the second step without executing the first step, you use the transactional business processes, right? So these are the four kind of projects and don't worry guys, we'll be discussing each one of these projects in the further modules. But for now, uh, let's start with the first project which is the blank project and let's try to create our first own project. All right. So before creating your own project, let's understand the components that are available in the UiPath tool. All right. So if you go to your UiPath studio, this is the screen that you see. All right. Now if I choose the blank project, I'll be asked to enter the name for it and then I'll click create and a new project will be created for me. So I've already created a project. This is a blank project for me guys. Now when you reach the screen guys, you will see different kind of tools that you have. On the top, you have the ribbon. This is called the ribbon wherein you have all the recording tool and then the screen scraping, data scraping, etc. What are these? We'll discuss in a moment. On the left side you have the activity pane. So these are basically the small tasks that I was talking about. You can go to each and every task and just all you have to do is drag and drop it here in the workplace and configure it so that it works according to your requirement. Right? Any every activity that you drag and drop here and every configuration for that can be handled inside the properties pane. For example, you drag and drop an activity here. So all the properties for it can be configured over here on the right side. Right, and if you see the downward section of the UiPath tool, it has variables, arguments, and imports. So basically, this is the area wherein you will be creating variables, deleting variables, or managing them by assigning them values. You'll also be dealing with arguments, and you'll also be dealing with imports. Now, what are arguments? What are variables? Don't worry, we'll be discussing each one of them. But for now, these are the different components, or these are the different places that you need to know about in UiPath Studio. All right. Now let's discuss each of these places in UiPath Studio one by one. So let's jump to the first component that is the ribbon. All right. So in the ribbon you basically have four functions that are very useful. So those four functions are recording, scraping, user events and variables. All right. So let's discuss them one by one. Now what is recording? So one way, like I said, one way of telling your computer what to do is by dragging and dropping activities in your workplace and telling them to do this and then do that and then do this right so this could be tiresome if you are creating a very large application right so if you want to lessen your time by of dragging and dropping and configuring each and every of the activity what you can do is you can record each and every step that you want to do and let the computer mimic it on its own so what i mean by that is you will hit record and then you will do exactly what you want your computer to do and it will mimic each and every action and do the same every time you execute the program all right so it's, it's a quite interesting tool and let me show you a demo how you can use this tool in your computer 
so let me jump to my tool and let me click on recording so once you click on recording these are the four options that you get all right so I'll be selecting the desktop recorder and what I'll be doing is I'll be recording the calculator right so let me quickly do that let me go here and click on record so the recording has started now it will record each and every movement that I do all right so first I'll go to start and I'll click on start and then I will click on calculator so once I've clicked on calculator let's do some calculations let's calculate a value let's say 5 plus 23 right once you have entered these values you click on equal to you have calculated the value now let's copy the result in the clipboard so you'll click on edit all right just ignore this warning and you will click on copy right so this basically copies the result inside your clipboard once it has done that let me quickly click on start again and let me launch the notepad and let me paste the value over here so I'll paste the value like this and then I want to type something so I'll just click here and I will press enter so for pressing enter you actually have to select it manually from here and then once you have pressed enter you can enter the text that you want to enter so let me enter the text something like this that this is the value which has been calculated by the recorder alright so this is the value that I want to type inside notepad so let's hit enter now alright so seems like everything has been recorded till now now what I'll do is I will close notepad and then I will close calculator and that is it I'll stop recording by hitting escape alright so I will be prompted with this screen again I'll hit save and exit and this is it as you can see it has created all the elements by itself it has gathered all the activities that are required to do this particular task and it has populated it inside this workplace all right seems fine now let's quickly run it and see if everything is running fine so we'll hit run and now each and every sequence will happen on its own as you can see it is calculating it copying it then going to notepad pasting it and then typing what we just typed it closing it and it's done once it is done it will return back to the screen where it started all right so this is how you record something on your computer and then execute it now let us come back to our slides and move on to the next component which is scraping all right guys so let's move on to the next tool which is called scraping now what is scraping scraping basically means when you are trying to extract information whenever you're trying to scrape something that means extracting something it is called scraping all right so when we talk about screen scraping or data scraping uh, we are basically trying to extract data out of the screen that we have on the computer all right so there are two types of scraping which are available one is called the screen scraping and one is called web scraping all right so web scraping basically deals with websites whenever we want to extract data out of website it is called web scraping whenever we want to extract data out of desktop applications or out of places wherein you don't have a structure defined and everything you use screen scraping alright so web scraping part is only possible whenever you have a structure defined in your website so that it can iterate on itself but whenever you don't have a structure defined you use screen scraping alright so this was about scraping guys then you have the next component is user events so what are user events so any kind of input that you give to the computer is known as a user event alright so for you as a user the only kind of events that you can do is maybe a keyboard event and a mouse event right so you can enter values through your keyboard or you can enter values through your mouse for scrolling up and down so all these kind of activities are included inside user events so it could be scrolling up or down it could be clicking the left button of the mouse or the clicking the right button of the mouse whenever you want your robot to do any of these things you will actually define these activities using user events all right and the fourth component is a very important component it is known as variable so variables are just have the same concepts as the concept is there in maths right so the value inside a variable varies that's how the name it called variable all right so whenever you want to change a value or whenever you think the value of a particular thing is going to change over the process of the flow of your program you include it inside a variable 
all right whenever you want to pass your value to some other component of your program you use the variable so variables are very important and how they are used why are they used it will be clear to you when we'll be doing the hands on part today all right so these are the four important components that are there in the ribbon guys the ribbon component of your ui path there is one more component which is called selectors which is again very very important but because of the length of the theory which is involved in selectors i'll be including the selectors part in another session but for today we are discussing these four components which are there in the ribbon also you have one more thing called new right so whenever you will click on new you can create a new file inside your project and guys you can create as many files as you want inside your project now you might be wondering why do you create files right so um, when you create a project the first file that you get is the main file all right so the main file is where your main program is resting all right so it's like uh, you can create a whole of your project inside one single file as well but that is something which is not recommended when you are doing it on a business level or when you are following the best practices all right so whenever you have a big program a big program that uh, you want to create you always try to break it into parts so that it becomes easier to debug when you are developing it also it becomes easier to debug when you are trying to upgrade any part of your program all right so for that very reason you tend to break your program into parts and that breaking of program into parts is what files is all right so each part of your program can be uh, included inside one file and that file can be called as a function inside the main program all right so we'll be doing this along the sessions i'll teach you guys how you can actually call them as functions but because today we have an introductory sessions we don't need the concept of functions and everything all right so all you need to know over here is by clicking on new you can define a new type of file now what kind of files you can actually create something like these so if you click on new you have these three file options that you can create you can create a sequence file which is nothing but a blank project you can create a flow chart file which will again have a template of a flow chart and then you can create a state machine file which will have the template of a state machine that are nothing but transaction business processes project all right that we discussed in the beginning of the session all right so this was about the new file guys so we'll be using this along the way but not today let's move forward and discuss the next component in our list which is the activity pane now this activity pane guys is the main thing in ui path right using activities you do sequences you create processes which actually lead to a project all right so you create different processes using which the final outcome that you get is the activity that you or the task that you actually wanted to do using automation all right so all the activities are listed inside activity pane on all you have to do is drag and drop activities inside the workplace so the workplace is the place wherein you will be designing your program all right so you can drag and drop the activities and that is it you don't have to code anything you don't have to learn coding or you don't have to uh, include variables or import libraries all of that is not required all what is required in this is simply a drag and drop of the component that you want to include in your program all right uh, so since we are talking about this guys i would like to clear one thing that you don't require coding experience or you don't require coding when you are working with rpa so even if you are from a non programming background you can easily learn all the rpa tools which are there in the market be it ui path be it blue prism be it automation anywhere or be it any other tool for that matter all right you can create projects which are complex as hell you can create projects which are simple you can create projects at a business level you don't require coding all right all you require is a drag and drop and a good logic behind your project that is it all right so let's start with the activities let's get an overview of all the domains which are there in the activities so guys these are the domains that are there there are basically seven domains in activities and each of these domains have several activities in them all right so the first domain is the ui automation domain now what is the ui automation domain it would basically include all the elements of the user interface for example let me go to my tool and i'll tell you what i mean so for example this is the domain that i want to explore all right so inside this domain as you can see you have element you have text you have ocr image browser window so whenever you want to do something with your mouse for example click something or double click something and hover on something 
you can use the mouse part of UI automation. If you want to do something with the keyboard, send a hotkey or type into, you can use the keyboard part of your UI automation. Same is the case with control. So control basically would include get text. If you want to highlight something, select some item in the user interface, etc. Right? You can also find something on the user screen and stuff like that. So whenever you want to do these kind of activities, you can refer to the element aspect in the UI automation. Whenever you want to do something with the image, for example, you want to click on a particular image wherever it be on the screen, you can use the image domain inside UI automation. If you want to extract text out of an image, you can use the OCR domain inside UI automation. So all of these are available under UI automation and they are at your disposal. And all you have to do is know them and do a simple drag drop and they are available at your service. Right, it's that simple. Then comes the user events. So user events basically would include triggers that you do whenever you are working in your, inside a your program. For example, when you do control C, it does copy. When you do control V, it pastes. Right, so all of these are user events. Uh, you can specify them inside your program using these activities. All right, then you have the orchestrator. So orchestrator is basically used whenever you are uh, working with say multiple computers which have UiPath Studio installed on them and you have multiple programs which are running so you can control all these programs or all these computers with one computer using the orchestrator right but orchestrator is something which is not fully functional inside the community edition so if you buy the standard edition the UI Studio standard edition or the pro edition that is the only time you can actually fully use the orchestrator wherein you can control all these computers which will be connected to your main computer all right then comes the system guys so system basically would help you to do activities which are system related such as copying something into your clipboard creating a file deleting a file opening the command prompt all these kind of tasks which are system related can be done under the system domain in activities all right then you have the programming domain which basically includes the programming concepts such as try catch which basically helps you in error handling you can include uh, programming concepts like if else like if condition do this else do that right so you don't have to code anything they are all available in terms of activities you just drag and drop them and then they are very easy to use all right and then you have workflows guys so workflows are basically uh, activities that are there inside flowcharts whenever you want to take a decision because of a particular input you can use elements inside the workflow whenever uh, you want your application to uh, recover gracefully out of a system exception or something like that you can use the workflow activities and yeah so these were all the activities that are there in your UI path studio guys there are endless activities which are available and on top of that if you need more activities you can actually download them from the UI path activity pane Alright, so if you want to find an activity which is not available, you can always search it online and you'll be able to find some of the activities that you want. For example, if you talk about email, the email module is not actually present inside UiPath Studio stock. So if you want to use the email activities that we'll be using today, basically you can download it by simply going into your tool and clicking on search, right? You will type in email. So for now, email is already there inside my tool right but if it's not there for example if I've typed email there is nothing there right so I will click on no results found search available packages and it will search it online right it's that simple once you find your package over here you can click on it and install it so basically if it's not finding email it's just because it's called mail activities so if I type in mail and I hit enter these are all the activities which are related to the mail right so you'll type in mail nothing will appear you just click on search available packages it will search it online and then you can install it it's that simple all right so this was it guys this was about the activity pane now let's move on to the properties pane which is again an important panel inside ui path so whenever you create an element for example if i drag and drop say uh, this particular activity which says send smtp mail message all the properties related to it I'll find it on the right side for example the port number I have to configure the port number where my email server is available right and then the server address I have to configure all of that 
I can configure here in the properties pane. So that's the reason this is very important. So basically most of your time would be spent over here where you will be configuring your activities properties to be correct. All right. And whenever you have an error in your uh, program creation, you can see that error using this exclamation mark on the top right corner. Right. So this blue exclamation mark means that something is wrong inside your program. All right. So it could be an activity which is inside this particular activity. It could be a problem with this activity. You have to figure that out. And I'll tell you how you can do that when I'll be creating the hands on part today. All right. So I think that is it guys. Let me come back to my slide. All right. So you've discussed the properties pane. Uh, let's move on to the control bar now. So when you talk about the control bar guys, you have variables, you have arguments, you have imports. So you can create variables using the control bar like this. You can click on control bar, right? And you can maximize it like this. And whenever you have an activity listed, you can create variables inside that particular activity, right? Then you have arguments. So arguments are basically used when you are working with multiple files. For example, if you are using the main file and you want to call a sequence that you define in some other file, so that file should have all its variables defined under arguments because arguments are something which you can pass on to other files, right? You cannot pass on your variables to other files because variables have their life only inside the specific activity or the specific sequence that you have defined it in, right? It is not valid across files. So when you're working with programs or with sequences which are there beyond one file, you use arguments, all right? How do we use them? What are they exactly? We'll be discussing them. Don't worry. So we'll be covering everything. And then we have imports. So imports, not something that you should be concerned with, but these are all the activities that are by default imported whenever you try to create your program. All right. So that is it. This was the control bar. And then, yeah, so this was the basic overview about the UiPath tool. And I think this information is sufficient enough to make you create your own program in UiPath Studio. All right, so before moving on to the actual project, let us quickly create a small project in UiPath which basically greet you with your name so that it becomes easier for you to relate what I just told you, okay? So say I want to create a program or I want to create an automation which will basically greet me by saying hey and then whatever name that I've specified. All right, the way to do that would be first to drag and drop a sequence. All right, so inside the sequence will be specifying everything. Now the first thing that I want my program to ask me is my name, right? So for that, I will search an activity called input dialog. All right, I'll drag and drop it here. Very simple. Now, what do I want the title of my dialog to be? Let's type in enter details, all right? Now, one more thing guys, every text that you're entering inside the UiPath uh, studio should be inside quotes. Only when you are using variables or only when you're using numbers is when you'll not be using the quotes, all right? So since enter details is a statement, it's a string, we'll be putting it inside quotes. And what should be the label of the input dialog or what should the label ask me? So it should ask me what is your name, all right? So once it asks my name, I want it to display me a message box stating hi and then the name that I've specified. So what is the name that I wanted to say? Say I wanted to say hey space and then my name. All right. So how will it get my name? Let me quickly show you how this thing particularly works. All right. So this will basically clear it out about variables. So when I run this particular program, I get this screen wherein I the the title of this uh, input dialog says enter details and it is asking me what is your name right so I specify my name is say Hemant right and I'll click on OK the moment I click on OK since I've not specified anything further this program will close but you might be wondering or maybe you should think it this way that when I'm entering Hemant this should get stored somewhere right so this is where you will require your variables, right? So if I press OK right now, my name will not get stored anywhere. But if I want my name to be stored anywhere, I'll have to click on input dialog. And over here you can see there's an option called output, all right? And inside that there is a thing called result. 
So where is the result being stored? It is being stored nowhere. So what I'll do is I'll create a variable over here which says name, all right? And I'll click on this activity that is input dialog and I'll specify that store the result in the name variable. So when I type n, you can see it already specifies me that this is the variable which starts with n, all right? So I'll hit enter, it'll auto complete it and done. Now my name will be stored inside the name variable, all right? So now I want the computer to greet me as my name, right? So I'll drag and drop the message box now, all right? And now I'll specify, it will say, hey, space, and then my name. So my name is inside the variable, right? So whenever you want to join variables and string, you will do something like this. So first you will specify your string, then you will, outside the quotes, you will specify plus, and then the variable name, that is name, all right? And that is it. So as you can see, the exclamations have gone. So once you want to check whether your program has errors or not, you just click outside of the sequence and it will check whether everything is okay. So right now everything is fine. That is why I don't have any errors. So let's run this program now. I'll click on run. So it is asking me what is your name. So I'll specify it's Hemant, right? And I'll click on okay. And it says, hey Hemant. So congratulations, this is your first program in UiPath. This is the simplest thing that you can do in UiPath and we have done it, right? Now let's move on to uh, something bigger, something that you guys might like, right? So let's move on to the hands-on part. So let's see what is our problem statement. So our problem statement is something like this, that we want to automate the task of copying data from a website, all right? And the data that we copy, we want it to be copied to an Excel sheet and that Excel sheet should then be mailed to us. And this should happen automatically, all right? So also, we have to specify the number of details or the number of entries that we want in the Excel file, okay? So let me clear you by showing you the website that we are going to extract the data from, okay? So the website is this. So this website basically generates fake names and addresses, right? So what we want to do is we want to get 50 fake names, for example, right? So if you want to get 50 fake names and we didn't have RPA in the picture, how would you do it? The way to do that would be to copy each and every entry and paste it inside your Excel file, all right? So let me tell you what I exactly mean. So this is the flow chart of what you have to do today. So first you will go to the website which you already went to. We will copy the details and we will store it inside a row in Excel, right? And we will keep on doing it until unless we are done with the numbers of the records that we want inside Excel file. For example, I want 50 names to be there in the Excel files. So I have to do this process 50 times before saving the Excel file and mailing it to the person who needs it, all right? Sounds daunting, right? Sounds very repetitive, sounds very boring, and sounds a lot of work as well, right? But don't worry, we won't be doing that. But let me quickly show you if I were to do that manually, how would I do it, all right? If I were to do this, I would first open an Excel sheet, right? So this is the Excel sheet. Now, first I would specify what all things that I want from my file. So I want the name, I want the phone number, and then I want the birthday for that particular person. All right, sound simple? So these are the three records that I want for 50 people. So <laughs> let's see what all we'll be doing. So first, I have to copy the name. I'll be copying it, pasting it here. Then I have to copy the phone number, which is here. And then I have to copy the birthday, which is here. All right. Now when I'm doing this, this is just for one record and I have to do for 50 more people. So it's a very big task, right? And once I'm done with 50 people, only then I'll be closing it and then mailing it to the person who needs it. So let's see how we can automate this task. All right. So let's close this for now and go to a UiPath tool. So the first thing that we have to do is go to the website. So we have to tell RPA to go to that particular website. So let's see how we can tell RPA to go to that website. So first we'll be dragging and dropping the sequence like we did before. All right, so this is a sequence. Let me drag and drop it here. Now I want to open the browser and go to that particular site, right? So let me open the browser. All right. Now I want to go to that particular URL. So like I said, any text that you enter, it has to be there inside quotes. So let's copy the website name. So this is it. Let's copy it here. All right. So now it will go to this particular website. Let's check if this is working. Also guys, 
when you are specifying open browser you have to specify the kind of browser you want to get opened in so you can specify that in the properties section in the browser type I want to get it as Chrome right I've specified Chrome and let's run this sequence now so it'll open Chrome and it open that website right you can check it here it open that website and then return to the tool so whenever it does the task it comes back to the tool right done so it is going to that website now we want to tell our program to copy the things that are there in that file and it has to do that repeatedly right so first it should know how many uh, records I want right so first it should ask me the number of records that I want so let me put in uh, a message box or a dialog box which will ask me the number of records that I want to get from that particular website right so same as we did in the previous example enter details and enter the number of customers cool so it will ask me this and it will store it inside say a variable called number all right and I'll specify it in the result part that is here we've discussed this already right we created the previous one so now whatever input I'm going to enter here it is going to store it inside the number variable all right sounds fine till here after that it will go to this particular website and it will do something now what it will do it has to do something repeatedly all right so uh, let us go to my PPT so it went to the website now it has to copy the details enter the details inside a row and again come back till I have this specified number of records all right so uh, we want a loop here because we have to do something repeatedly so what I'll do is I'll use a loop called do while which is this I'll drag and drop it here now there are two aspects of this loop one is the condition and then you have the body body is something that you will be doing inside the loop and condition is something which will be checked every time it goes inside the body all right so at every iteration it will be going inside the body and before that it will be checking whether the condition is true or not so what we want to check is whether the number of records that we have entered in the Excel file are matching the number of records that we want or not if it is matching it will close the program if it is not matching it will fetch one more name from over there and then paste it inside Excel all right so all we have is this number which is number right and we want something which will be lesser than this number but will also increment every time the iteration happens all right so let us declare one more variable and call it val all right and declare it as type integer which basically means this will be a number that we are creating and this number will be compared with this variable val will be measured against number and if val is not equal to number or val is lesser than the number it will keep on executing the loop all right so let's define the value for something so let's define the value as zero all right so val is zero as of now and we want to see the condition is val should be less than number now guys once you enter this it will give you an error why because val is basically an integer and an integer is being compared to a string which is not possible right you cannot compare a number with a sentence for example you cannot compare 52 with hello how are you doing all right so that is why this error is coming because we have defined number to be a string right if we defined it to be a number then this error might not have been there so we have to convert this into a number and the way to convert is it is like this so we specify c int which basically means convert it into an integer and then compare it with val so if val is less than the value of number the string value or the integer value then do something all right now also guys you have to take care that if i am creating a variable inside do while it will not be valid throughout the uh, program all right it will be only valid inside this particular container so if I want my variable to be valid throughout the program I have to declare it at the container level so if I declare it at the sequence level as you can see scope is something where the variable is valid all right so if I create a variable which is valid at the sequence level it will be valid throughout the program all it will be valid in all the containers which are inside 
this particular in container which is yellow right now which is sequence if I specify it inside do while which is over here it will be only valid inside the containers which will be inside do and so forth all right so you have to be very careful where your variable is actually valid so I want my variable to be valid throughout the program and that is why I have declared it at the scope level of sequence. Cool. So now I have configured my loop to check the condition whether my value is less than C integer or not. C integer of number or not. Now if it is less than that value the first thing that I want to do is increment the value of val by 1. Alright. So how can I do that? I can do that by an activity called assign. I will drag and drop it here. Now I want val to be val plus 1 every time it enters the loop right. So if the value was 0 over here and it checked the condition and it is executing the loop it will be 1 now. If it's 1 it will get inside the loop it will be 2 now alright. So this has to be done so that this value continuously increases so that it can match against this number alright. So every time you will be entering inside the loop one entry will be added inside the row. Right? and we only want say 5 entries so this number will be 5 so once we enter a value enter one row the value become 1 the second time we enter it value of val becomes 2 and so on so we want it till the number becomes 5 and once it becomes 5 it will no longer execute so this is what we are trying to do so we have assigned the value of variable to be val plus 1 the next thing that we want to do is we want to extract the information from the website Right, so for doing that, there's an activity called get full text. All right, so we will drag and drop it here. That is after your assign, right? And then what text do we want to get? So we will click on it, and this is the browser, right? So we will click here, and we will specify what do we want to get. So I want to get the name now. So I'll select name and done it will get the name right from the website now I want to specify where this name is being stored so the output has to be stored in a name variable so I'll specify name over here right and I'll create the variable name here with the variable type string and that is it so if I click here alright so once you have created a variable called name you just have to go inside the properties and in the output panel you have to specify the name of that variable alright so once you have specified that we want to get the phone number next so after this we'll again go here drag and drop it and then click on indicate element inside browser alright so let me click on indicate element inside browser and then I will go on and click on the phone number which is here alright so it has got the phone number but where it does it store it has not stored it anywhere so I'll specify phone here which is basically the variable name right and then in the text I will specify phone alright okay so this stores the extracted value inside the phone variable then I want to get the birthday right so I will create one more variable called birthday right and then drag and drop one more get full text and get the birthday over here which is this all right so when I've got the birth date again I have to specify it using a variable so this is birthday hit ok and done all right so my value will now be stored inside birthday and that is it guys so birthday has been stored inside the variable, the phone number has been stored inside the variable and so has the name. Now the next thing is I want to get it inside the Excel row if you guys remember. Now for getting it inside the Excel row I have to first create a data structure called data table. Now how will I create a data table is something like this. Go to my activities, I will search for data table, right, so it says build data table. So I will drop it here right so I want to build a data table and the data table output in a variable called extract data table right and this data table has to be defined in the variables as well so let's define this variable extract data table right and the type of that variable would be system dot data which is this and 
inside this it would be data table all right so this is the thing that we want we'll hit ok and we have successfully created a variable called extract data table which is basically a table inside which you will be creating rows right so we have defined the data table here and defined where the output for that should be all right so we have defined a table now this table will be created first and then this table will be written to an excel file all right so we cannot time in again write to an excel file because that would do a lot of processing and our computer may become overburdened because of that because every time it has to open the excel file paste it there and then come back right so it's better to uh, store it inside a variable first and that variable is nothing but a table kind of variable and inside the table we'll be entering all the details and then at once we'll be writing all of that variable inside the excel file and saving it all right so we have created the data table now what we want to do is enter a row inside this data tables let's see how we can do that so there will be an activity called add row add data row okay so what we'll do now is we will drag and drop it after we have created all the variables all right so now i want to add a row with my name my phone number and my birthday so let's see how we can do that so over here i will specify curly braces which basically means an array right and i will specify the variables that i've just created that is name phone and birthday all right and hit okay so with this my array has been completed so as you can see it is giving me an error okay so it is not i have not told it yet to which table it should write this row to all right so that table will be specified over here and i'll just write e and it'll get the table automatically let's hit enter and the error has gone all right so in this loop at every iteration a row will be added and after a row has been added we have to refresh the page so that a new record comes in all right so how will we refresh the page now for refreshing the page if you go to your browser the way to do that would be to click refresh over here or to click generate over here so if you hit generate a new name comes in all right so it's easier to click generate so let us do that let us specify a click over here so we will search for an activity called click here it is and we will drag and drop it here and let's specify where do we want to click so i want to click here let's specify it and we are done right so now it will click every time it has added a row into the variable for our table all right so once it enters the value and it once it stores the value inside the variable it will hit generate and that will basically refresh the page it will come out it will again check the condition that is is it less than the number that we have specified if it's less than the number it will again do all this process with a new name a new number and a new birth date all right seems fine right seems fine till here so let's see if we have missed out something if we have done everything so it will go to the website it will copy the details it will enter the details in a row and repeat it till it reaches the number that we have specified once it has reached the number it has specified it will go ahead again and save it in the excel file so let's see if we can how we will save it in the excel file so now i want to write the variable inside the excel file for that i will specify an activity called write csv which is this i'll drag it and drop it here all right and i'll specify the file path of the file of the excel file that i want to create right so i'll just click on browse and let's name the file as extract all right and hit on save so this will save it inside a csv file now which table would be the source of this file the table is extract data table you might be wondering why am i specifying it here because after my loop is complete my variable will have all the details or all the numbers of the rows which are there and only after the loop it should actually write this csv file that is why we are creating it here that is after the loop all right and you have to be very careful when you're specifying this write csv okay i think we are done we, there is nothing else left so let's check if this is working all right let's hit run and let's hope for the best so how many number of customers do i want let's say i want 20 customers let's see how it works so i'll hit okay it'll open the browser okay so it's the input array is logged in there are the number of columns in this table fine 
so we missed out something guys what we missed out was we didn't structure the table we didn't tell the table how many entries are there all right so for doing that we will click on data table and this is basically the number of columns which are there in the data table so let's specify the number of columns we'll add a column the first column name would be name right specify okay let's add one more column name of this column would be mobile number all right let's hit okay and let's hit create one more column and name it as say your birthday right birthday and specify okay so these are the three columns which are needed okay let's click okay so we have defined the structure we missed out on this part it's good we got the error and now let's run it so now it shouldn't give any error enter the number of customers so let it be again 23 hit ok open the browser and seems to be working it seems to be hitting generate and let's see if everything goes well so as you can see it is happening very fast it is basically copying at each instant and then clicking on generate so let's see if everything goes well all right so we return to this page which, be, which means it has successfully executed everything let's check if we have a csv file now all right so we'll go inside the ui path and this is the project folder and we have a file name called extract so let's see if we have something inside extract all right so we do have values we do have mobile numbers and we do have birth dates all right so let's see how many are there so the first column was name so that's why the number is 24 here but if you minus the, the first row that means we have successfully got 23 records from this particular website and we have got them stored inside the excel file awesome guys one part of our automation is done now the next part of our automation is to basically email to a particular person so first of all it should ask the email as well right so let's specify one more input dialog which asks for our email id so the title should be email right and the label should be please enter the email address awesome now it will store it inside a variable called email all right so let's click on input dialog in the results let's enter the variable email and that is it right so we have got our email inside the email variable now all we have to do is send an email so for sending an email the activity's name is smtp right we'll drag and drop it here and then we'll have to configure everything so whom should it be addressed to so it should be addressed to email the subject should be extracted data remember guys quotes are very important and the body should be please find attached right let's attach the files as well so the file is basically here you have to specify the file path right so file path for, for that would be this right so let's copy this and paste it inside here all right let's hit ok so we have attached the file and all we have to do is configure our email server now all right guys so i've configured everything here let's quickly go into the properties and configure everything so the port number is 465 the server is smtp.gmail.com the email is Hemant at the rate edureka.co and the password for the same is this all right so we have specified everything over here okay guys so i think now it is all correct let's try to execute it now so we'll hit on run so this is my email as you can see so let's enter the number of customers that we want say we want around 15 customers and the email id that i want to send to is this let's click on ok and let's see what we get all right so it has stopped generating anymore and it's completed okay let's hope for the best and check our mail okay so we have got a mail from me because i've specified my email address and right so let's download and we've got a file as well as an attachment let's download this file and let's check if everything is fine so I have the names I have the mobile number and I have the birthdays and there are like 16 rows which basically means I have 15 records and congratulations guys we have successfully created our first project in UiPath studio so congratulations on that 
so we save the excel file we mail the file to the respective contact and we are done all right guys so that is it from my side i hope you guys enjoyed this session and i hope you guys try this session on your own as well so uh, what i would suggest is try this demo on your computer as well so that you get a better understanding to what we did today right you can refer this video again and again to see if you go wrong anywhere and if you have any doubts you can always comment it in the comment section and we will be happy to help you right so guys thank you for attending today's session i hope you learned something new today goodbye and see you in the next session